Hello, somebody wanted me to do um, a video on um, my, my things I've woven. Now this, I wove here on the loom a couple years ago. I had a white warp, see, and then I just used yarn. I went back and forth with yarn. And you can see that the pattern was like this some of the time and like this some of the time. And see how I tried to do different things with it? It's just experimenting. Anyway, I put this down here where you can see it. So it's just a, a made out of yarn or wool, what they call wool. That's one. And then when that came off of the warp, you see how narrow the warp was. See, I didn't have all these blue strings in it, so it was only that wide. After that came off, then I started using fleece. And I just took my bag of fleece, and I took a handful at a time, and I opened up the warp, and then I, I laid it in. You see how much I used at a time? You see, I just laid it all in, spread it out, and then I beat it. Okay, I'll put this on the floor over here. My laptop cord. Now, I don't use this for a rug, because we would ruin it in no time flat. like it's already gotten a bit ruined on the end. There it is. So I just went back and forth at the end of it here with regular yarn. And then I added handfuls of fleece. It was carded fleece. Which I found at the dump, by the way. Somebody had thrown out four sheep, four fleeces. It is soft on the feet, however. Okay, and the, the way I learned to weave was when my grandmother was around, she had, she always had a loom set up. And she was always weaving, and we had gone to her house when we were young, and she had a very, a narrow warp on there, and about a foot wide. And she showed us how to, which petals to push, and I loved the feeling of throwing the wool back and forth. The shuttle. I really enjoyed the shuttle. It had such a it had such a nice feel to it. It was such a meditation just to throw it back and forth. And then there was the challenge because if you lift up different feet or put, push different pedals down, you get different design. Like the Mexicans and such, they have beautiful like triangles in their patterns. I don't know how to do things like that. And um Anyway, the Heritage Weavers at Mira, they do all these intricate um, dish, dish towel kind of things, but they're, you know, bumps here and there, and, every, and I don't understand it. I don't know how to do those. I've seen the chart with all the numbers. It doesn't make any sense to me. I can see a picture, but I can't see, I can't translate the numbers into pictures. Anyway, so that's for, I forget your name. You'll have to tell me when you see this. But anyway, those are the two things that I've woven on my grandmother's hand. And I still have to put the warp on. I've just got it set up, ready to put on. And I'm not sure about my... This is... The warp. The new warp has to be tied to this and then pulled through. Actually, I should have tied it. I don't think you can pull it through these things. The reed. That's what I did. I don't know the names of these things, so I put on um, oh, I, 205 heddles and yarns. That's how many are on there right now. And this is the beater. And this is, these are harnesses. And these things are heddles. And this is the back beam. And I had one on here. Oh, what's this say? This is... This is the cloth beam. 
and this is the warp beam. It's the only way I can figure out to remember these things, and this is the reed. I don't know where my thing is. It said that on there before, but it's the only way I can think of to learn the names of them is to just put little tags on them, and then after a while I'll know what the names are. And you can know too when I show you them. Okay, that's about my weaving. See ya.